Good morning, everybody. It's Anne Sinclair from Digestive Detective. There's no makeup or no hair done or anything today. I've got a, a bit of a cold, so I'm feeling pretty ordinary today. But I just thought I'd come on and share um, my story and how I got into this and all of those sorts of things because I've had a couple of people ask me um, in clinic uh, this week and last week I had somebody ask me. Um, so as a kid growing up, um, and look, everybody's story is important. And, and that's why in my first consultation, I ask people about um, what their story is because a lot of the stuff that happens to us in childhood can can play a part and there's lots of research around this at, at what happens to you further on um, through your life and how that impacts you on a deeper level and not just a um, emotional level but also on a, f a physiological level. Um, so I grew up in a coal mine, uh, so not a very big place. Um, I was a really sensitive and emotional child. I would cry when everybody, anybody spoke to me, which was not good. Um, and as, and I grew up in a very 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 um, what's the word to use um, disturbed household dysfunctional household I would say my father was a drinker um, and he liked to beat my mother up a little bit um, so that was always problematic so we were always under fear that something was going to happen to us um, so as a child probably one of the things that I could control was my bowel um, and. I probably the fear of um, all that was happening at home uh, probably left me um, constipation with with constipation because I felt like that was the only thing that I could control well um, if that's makes any sense um, and so I had um, I, and we ate everything my mum was um, a, a pretty decent cook in for, for what was around in that um, era of cooking you know we'd have the meat and six veg or um, we, we normally had more than three veg so that's been a really good standing for me because even now I still cook eight or nine or ten veg every night um, so that was really great for us she would cook us meat and, uh, and our six veg quite consistently um, and my parents were divorced at when I was about 11 um, and it was a pretty traumatic divorce for them. My mum completely moved away from where we lived and they made us choose who we want to live from. So it was all really um, a pretty tragic uh, and traumatic experience um, to be an 11-year-old and have to choose which parent you're going to go to is, is quite difficult. Um, so as a teen, I left home uh, around about 17, so really early. Uh, and basically I ate whatever I liked um, drank whatever I liked, I smoked, I, I was pretty bad, I was all round bad. Um, and, you know, I remember having a round of McDonald's one night and my boyfriend, who later became my husband, um, I, I remember us sitting there and then all of a sudden I was just doubled over in agony on the floor, um, wondering what the heck was going on with me because, you know, I had this such um, tremendous amount of pain in my stomach, I felt like I was going to explode, it was just really awful. Um, and in my 20s, I didn't pay much attention to what was going on for me um, diet-wise. I just sort of, yeah, life is busy. Um, I, I married and divorced. Um, <clears throat> I moved from Queensland to New South Wales, which was a pretty big thing when you're 21 and don't actually know anybody. But I had a really great job. Um, and so I moved with that. And basically, I worked lots of hours, like 80 to 100 hours a week in my 20s. Um, and I didn't really... Um, have too many digestive problems well I probably did in hindsight but you know I totally ignored them because that's what you do when you're a 20 something um, so in my 30s I remarried um, I had a baby and I had bouts of um, spontaneous vomiting so it happened with my first baby shortly after my first baby and nobody could figure it out and then uh, 16 months later I had my second baby and I would go days where I just um, wake up and then I'd be fine all day and then all of a sudden I'd have this um, sporadic bout of vomiting um, and it got to the point that it was so bad I thought oh my god I need to really get this under control so I went to the doctor and they just kept saying no there's nothing wrong and fortunately for me I had a friend who was a doctor and she said to me go back and demand that they do a liver function test she said I think you've got um, gallbladder issues and so basically I went back to the doctor and said, you know, I've got a friend who's a doctor. She thinks you should do this. They did those tests. Um, and the same night they phoned me and put me in for an emergency colectomy, um, so which is a gallbladder removal. So my gallbladder um, had 
sh shrank and was diseased around the edge. It didn't have stones and stuff in it, but there was um, some disease in it and that they needed to pull it out. Would I have... Um, so when I spoke to the guy, I, I said to him, you know, I am really concerned that my digestion is so bad and, and this might make it worse. Uh, no, 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 this will be the cure of, for your problems. As soon as you have this gallbladder out, you'll be, you know, so much better. Life will be good. Um, well, that wasn't really the case. Um, once I had my gallbladder out, it, my digestion was even worse if that was possible. Um, and by now I had... Um, started to do healthy eating and um, looking at what I was, um, you know, putting in my mouth. Most people, when they have their um, gallbladder out experience problem with fats, they get chronic diarrhea. Um, I didn't have that. I got extreme constipation. So it just goes to show how different we all are. Um, so I went to the doctors again. And they said, basically, you've just got IBS. Live with it. Hi, Julia. Um, and then... Um, take this medication well the medication didn't work for me it, it fixed my diet uh, it fixed my constipation but i had chronic diarrhea so after about a week i said no more to that um and i found some things that really um exacerbated my problem so things like stress or crappy eating or um holding on to go to the bathroom rather than going that would be sort of a crux so what happens with your bowel um is our bowel is like a piano accordion, if anybody remembers those things. So they've got these little house strations. Um, so, you know, the squeeze boxes. So they've got those sorts of things. So what happens after with chronic constipation? Because there's a continual blowing out um, of those, um, that soft tissue, um, you lose all that, that house strations. So they just become smooth and longer. Um, so the couple of times I've had a colonoscopy, they always say, gee, you have a really long bowel. That's the reason you're constipated. But I sort of know from time gone on that um, it's not really that at all. It's it's more that um, the house strations have gone and, and basically that's made my bowel longer. It wasn't longer to start with. Um, so some things that I would say to you about bowel issues and and for people with Crohn's disease and stuff these things would apply to you too is think about um what you're putting in your mouth and it's really difficult to find out um what the triggers are for you for a lot of people it really is difficult to find the triggers even for me and still now hi Narelle I'm um, still now I'm um trying to find out what the triggers are um some of the things that impact people the most are um stress uh, eating the wrong foods, um, not going to the bathroom when you need to, um, talking about uh, the amounts of fiber and things like that that people have um, in their diet that sort of um, is can be problematic for some people as well. Uh, so some of the things that I noticed, your family gets worn down by it, especially when you've had it for a long time. Um, and it's difficult and I'm, they love you and they want to support you and do everything that's right but they do get tired of listening to um, your story or when things go wrong it's difficult for them to know what to do and, and um, who to turn to so uh, it's, that's why it's really great to get support from other people and be in a like-minded group that that um, you can get support from because part of the whole process and, and, and particularly for me part of the whole process was really um, discovering how I could change my situation for myself. Um, consequently, why I went on to study naturopathy um, and nutrition and herbal medicine. Uh, there are things you can do. Exercise was really great for me. Um, meditation, I'd love to say that I'm a meditator. Um, I'm not. Uh, I have tried, and it, when I do try, it absolutely works a treat. Um, but it's just getting that con continuity, like everything else, that consistency. Um, and that's what I found over years of trying stuff. Um, that consistency, doing doing one thing consistency for a long time. Um, is my constipation cured? No. Can I manage it more often than not? Yes. And I think that um, when you've had a problem for such a long period of time, it's really important to remember that um, you're not going to be able to resolve it in a short period of time. Um, if, if only we had a magic wand, that would be um, fantastic. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have that. So one of the things I think is really important is to have a community um, that you can share and, and listen to and glean bits of information from everybody else because we go farther when we're together um, and listening to other people's stories and how they relate and react 
and what they do to their um you know to help themselves which is it's really good to be able to um share and do that so um so that would be my top tips and that's my story and lots of people ask me about that all the time why I got into this um I also find too a couple of things that are useful is um for me is finding the right nutrients that you're missing often that um we we are missing nutrients because you're especially if you're constipated and and even if you've got diarrhea hi georgia um even if you've got diarrhea you will be missing nutrients so find those nutrients find out what they are seek help with that and take those consistently for me magnesium citrate has been a life changer um and and having support of other people you know i see my own practitioner um i don't just self diagnose i i actually have my own naturopath um and i have had for years so i think it's really good to um get help when you're needed and 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 have support you know being in a group where you can get lots of support is is really a fantastic thing so thanks for watching um i will to see you next monday um i look forward to uh, sending out my newsletter there will be some big news in the newsletter this week um so if you're not signed up please do um it's for something that i've been working on for weeks and weeks and weeks now uh so i look forward to everybody seeing it and i'll talk to you on next monday thanks so much bye